welcome to ICA Online Service. We are so glad that you choose to worship with us today. Before we begin, this is some important information that you need to know. We have children's church material available for your kids, so you can download it at bit.ly slash ICA Kids Online. We hope you and your child can have a great experience and encounter God together. Follow ICA Kids on Instagram to get the latest updates from ICA Kids. ICA Prayer Service is going stronger on Zoom every Tuesday at 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. You can check our Instagram on Tuesday and get the meeting ID and let us be strengthened by praying together. We understand that today's situation is not easy for many of us. If you need help, write them down at bit.ly slash ICA Prayer Online and our pastors will pray for you and accompany you during this difficult situation. ICA, just reach to us and we would like to stand together with you. Friends, we provide a new way for you to donate online to the ministry at ICA. You can scan the QR code on the screen or just visit icsby.com slash giving for more information. Have you followed ICA on social media and subscribed to ICA channel? We've prepared devotion, recipes, and more interesting content and updates to accompany you during the quarantine because physical distancing is not spiritual distancing. This upcoming Thursday, Table Talk is airing on our 8th episode. Through this occasion, we will discuss the business leadership challenge, such as managing our people in these transition situations, adjusting to the newer system and protocol, and facing other struggles. We will listen and learn from our own ICA family members, their humble and awe-inspiring leaders in the marketplace. We encourage you to invite your business partners, managers, or friends and join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. so they can be blessed through you. So stay tuned to ICA SPY Instagram for the meeting ID. All right, those are the information for today. And worship is about to start. Are you ready? I pray that the presence of God will go beyond every screen. God bless you. Oh 
Yes, Lord, we really are not enough. We really cannot do it on our own. Unless you come, unless you intervene, unless you step in right in the middle of our mess, right in the middle of our struggles, right in the middle of our relationships, right in the middle of our business, right in the middle of our city, God. Because no matter how much we try, no matter how much we want to go deep, no matter how much we want to go further on, onward, God, we know that besides you, outside of you, we cannot make it. So Lord, we thank you, God, that not even for one minute that we have been forsaken, that we have been let go, that we have been forgotten, but in every moment of our lives, God, you are strong, you are here, you are in this place, you are in our homes, you are in our struggles, you are right where we're at. You don't ask us to go where you are, but you come to where we are, and that you heal us right where we are, you touch us right where we are, and you strengthen us right where we are. God, we thank you that even though we are never enough, we ask you that you come and meet us here, right where we're at, right in our circumstances. God, we thank you that in this season of COVID and this pandemic, Lord, we know that we have you to rely on, we have you to have our rest, we have you to surrender, we have you, God, to be our self-sufficient God. Everything comes from you. You are more than enough for us. And so God, we thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And today, Lord, as we hear from your word, may we be touched, may we be transformed, may we be changed forever. And it's in Jesus' name that we humbly pray. Amen. Selamat datang kepada teman-teman saudara saudari. Setiap minggu ibarat kami di YouTube mempunyai teks terjemahan dalam bahasa Indonesia. Saudara bisa menyalakan ini dengan menekan tombol CC di bagian bawah layar di YouTube. Silakan mengajak semua teman-teman untuk bergabung dengan kami ICA. We just want to say welcome to ICA's online service today. We are in a series called Modern Healthy Families where we are trying to provide you with practical ways to bring health to your homes and your families. This week is episode two of a mini series about marriage. Today we are going to add three more skills that will help you to bring health to your home and your marriage. Okay, so last week we started talking about adjustments Corey and I had to make as newlyweds. Um, one of the changes for me was the idea that talking was not simply about the exchange of information. Conversations were more about what was said. It, it included how it felt and talking was about listening and understanding feelings. Now, I don't think as a, a young man, I, ha I, I do think as a young man, I had the ability to recognize feelings. Otherwise, Corey would have married a Vulcan. Most couples don't get to their wedding day without feelings. But there were still moments after marriage that Corey found herself talking into my blank stare. The healthy habit I've tried to learn through the years is this. Listen wholeheartedly. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 says this. Share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. I think in marriage, sharing goes two ways. One person is speaking while the other person is listening. Now, there's a guy by the name of Ralph G. Nichols. He's a famous researcher on psychology and the discipline of listening. He said this, the most basic of all human needs is the need to, be, to understand and to be understood. In his studies, he found that 70% of communication between a husband and wife is often misunderstood. What causes this breakdown is not misunderstanding the words spoken, but overlooking the feelings and the nonverbal communication behind the words. Uh, when Corey and I were recently married, she would ask me about my day. And I would give her a list and a general outline of my day, including who I met, what I did, the decisions I had to make, and she would respond with something like, yeah, but um, what did they say? Well, Corey wanted to understand people's response, their emotions and their feelings. Me, not so much. I had to change in this regard. 
True communication usually does not occur until each person understands the feelings behind the words. Understanding how your spouse feels says, I care about you. In 2 Corinthians, Paul is writing about his experience as he travels around the world to establish churches and grow faith in these young believers. He experienced a lot of opposition, emotional and physical pain in the process, but he writes about God's sensitivity to our feelings. He says that God is willing and able to address our emotional needs. Paul writes that, he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. We should listen wholeheartedly and comfort our spouse in order to truly listen to them. You know, this is not always the case, but often men see a problem and we just want to try to fix it. And this is one of the strengths of men. It, it is important. However, there have been times when I have missed what was most important to my wife and to my girls. What was needed wasn't finding a solution to the problem. Sometimes your spouse might simply be seeking to be heard and understood. And this can be even more important than actually fixing the problem. And I think I've learned as well that sometimes when John is trying to just fix the problem when he's talking to me, it's not because he doesn't care. He actually does care. He's just trying to solve the problem. In that first year of marriage, I remember asking John, do you even love me? He said, of course I love you. I changed the oil in your car. I remember thinking, I remember thinking I can actually pay someone to do that. You don't have to do that for me to show me your love. There are other ways. But over the years, he has listened to me more deeply. In fact, he makes time for me every day. I know I can talk to John, I can trust him, and he will listen. He will also try to help when he can, and he has good advice to offer. But if he does get back to that initial stage of just trying to fix things rather than just listen, I know it's out of his genuine love and care and concern for me. And I'm not as offended. In fact, I really appreciate him. Um, just maybe some uh, three quick tools to better communication. Let's start there. First, effective communication starts with safety. Uh, people won't talk to you if they don't feel safe. Uh, that is the same in marriage. If your wife is afraid you're going to yell at her or even hit her, she's not going to talk to you. If your husband thinks you're going to put him down and just berate him, he will not say another word. We have to create a safe environment in our relationships and particularly in our home and our marriages. James chapter 1 verse 19, he writes this and it's very good. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get married. Angry. No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> it says slow to get angry. Allow your, that was a joke. Allow yourself to be touched by your spouse's emotions. And this is how God responds to us. He is motivated and he is moved by our pain, our joy, our suffering, our loneliness, our concern, and even our sadness and mourning. This is an easy way to elevate your depth of communication. Another thing you could do is what we've called, there's an acronym for it, it's called love talk. It means listen, understand, and value. It doesn't really work in Bahasa, but it works in English. Listen, understand, and value. Listening does not always equal agreement. Corey's mom said this, she said, if the two of you are always agreeing in marriage, then one of you is unnecessary. And sometimes Corey and I disagree and that's what allows us to sharpen each other in fact. But we have to listen and we have to understand and we have to value one another. 
Beyond listening wholeheartedly, another thing that we can do to build ourselves as a healthy modern family is to support strongly. Luke chapter 6 verse 38, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. In marriage, not only are both sides willing to listen, they are willing to give what their spouse needs. By supporting each other, both sides in the relationship eventually get what they need. There are times when I'm super busy or going through a hard situation and I need a lot of support. And in contrast, there are times when John needs more support. It's like we take turns supporting one another and this brings health to our marriage. Uh, Matthew chapter seven, verse 12, it says, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. It's the golden rule. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. Now, this is not something that is contractual. Our relationships, our marriage is not meant to be contractual. If you do this, then I will do that. No, this is a give regardless of what you get in return. That's what we're asking, being asked to do, to do good for others regardless of how they respond to us. If you want a modern healthy family, love and support people regardless of their response to you. In order for support to happen, we have to be honest about our expectations and our needs. In order for our spouse to understand, we have to clearly articulate what is going on. A lot of times, a lack of support can occur simply because our spouse's needs are unspoken or left unclear or left unexplained. Be honest and clear with your spouse. Tell them what you're going through and ask them for support. Another thing is that we need to accept each other's differing strengths and don't be threatened or insecure because of them. I, I think earlier in marriage, particularly that first year of marriage, we, you know, it's always that year of discovery about your spouse. And I realized that my wife was better at a number of things than I was. And my my initial reaction to her superiority was to feel bad in these areas and, you know, even feel threatened. But then I realized, and sometimes this takes time, but I realized, man, I don't have to be good at everything. God, give me my wife as a helper and let her do what she is good at and then praise her for it. And as a result, I feel like I'm a better man and we're a better couple because of my wife's strengths. And we make a better team because we have differing strengths. In the same way, our home is absolutely better and more balanced because John brings his strengths to the table. So it's my job as his wife to see his strengths and build him up. As a married couple, we need to build each other up. Women, I want to encourage you to guard your husband with your words. Guard what you say about him and what you text about him. Let those words be positive. Scripture says encourage one another and build each other up. There are no perfect husbands out there, but I've met a lot of the people in ICA and there are some really great guys who are very good men. And I happen to think I have one of them. Encourage one another build each other up. Are your words building your husband up or tearing him down? In private, face to face with him, and in public before the eyes of people, let your words speak life and value to your husband. Value the good in him and tell him that he's important to you. Uh, another thing that we've been talking about, uh, even among our staff, is this issue of integrity. We need to act with integrity, both in our, in our relationships, in our marriages, and in our workplace, and, and in our position and roles. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4 says this, Give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. 
Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? The scripture happens to address these two really important issues that frequently bring young couples into the counseling office, that issue of sex and money. You know, I want to encourage married couples to demonstrate trustworthiness and integrity in every area of their lives, especially in faithfulness to your spouse and integrity in finance and dealing with money. Integrity in relationship means both parties act in line with what they think and say. Both of you are faithful to the promises you made to one another on your wedding day. We need to keep our promises. Keeping promises builds trust and security. Trust makes relationships secure and strong. There's no suspicion. There's no fear. There's no insecurity when we have and we show routine levels of integrity. And the good news found in this piece of scripture that John just read tells us that we are not alone. When we are trying to live with integrity, God is there to help us. He will not fail us. He will not abandon us. And He will be our helper. If your spouse is a person who acts with integrity, this is something to be grateful for. Thank them for their integrity. And if you yourself have struggled with integrity in your marriage, ask your spouse and the Lord for forgiveness and ask the Lord for help. We can find plenty, plenty of examples in scripture where people made some pretty serious mistakes, very serious mistakes, but a repentant heart was consistently greeted with God's grace and right. forgiveness. In fact, in the end, God used some of these people who had made very big mistakes and he used them in significant world changing ways. That same offer of grace is available for you today from the Lord and I hope also from your spouse. Let today be a day of new beginnings for you and start with a clean slate by asking God for forgiveness today. Psalm chapter 119 verse 5 says, Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. God is not giving up on you. Be faithful and show integrity over time. So we're, as we close this mini-series um, about uh, six habits for modern healthy marriage, well, the first one was give generously, change gradually, forgive frequently, listen wholeheartedly, support completely, and finally live with integrity. Now I'm just going to take a guess that not all of you are gonna be able to work on all six of those at the same time. But I want to encourage you that this week, take some time to talk and to pray about these habits as a couple. Choose your top three and work on them and watch how God helps you to improve your marriage. Let's pray as we close today. Lord Jesus, I just thank you again for each couple, especially that's behind the screen today. And Lord, all of us are working to become more like you. That's why we've showed up today. That's why we've come to this service today. We're trying to be more like you, Jesus. Lord, I pray in these marriages that are sitting behind the screen that you would bless them. Lord, I pray that they would recognize right now that you are a God who is there to help them and you're going to help them see things through. Lord, I pray for integrity in marriages. Lord, I pray that there would be health and integrity in each marriage that is a part of ICA. 
And Lord, where there has been a, a breach in that integrity, I pray for your forgiveness to be sweet and helpful and that forgiveness would be extended one to another and that would be a free gift that they can give in order to rebuild their marriage. Lord, I pray that they would be a generosity from husbands to wives and wives to husbands. And I pray that you would help people to listen and support one another. Lord, we ask for your help specifically for marriages today, but for each individual as well. Lord, would you bless and keep each one who's sitting behind the screen today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, before you leave, we're gonna give you this one final blessing from the scriptures. Uh, we're gonna read from Hebrews chapter 13, starting in verse 20, and it says this. Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord's blessing and his grace be with you. We'll see you next week where we'll continue to focus on families specifically. Have a great week. ICA, we miss you so much and we can't wait to see you in person in the future at Cafe Asa and here at ICA.
waiting God so loved the world There's a song that stirs the spirit and it calls the heart to life It's an anthem in the making Can you feel it start to rise? Can you hear the generations Getting louder over time? Every son and every daughter Singing out into the night It's not time to be silent Let his name be lifted high. 